Now, this headset here uses artificial intelligence to identify objects for the visually impaired. It can read the label on a product or match its image to a known item and then tell the user what it is. Oh, it's called IC. This device is developed by the NUS School of Computing. And here to tell us how it works is Associate Professor Suranga Nana Yakara. He's research head of uh, the lead, he's research lead, pardon me, of this project. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks. It's a very sleek uh, item indeed, a piece of equipment that's delicate. And, and uh, we'll pass it over to you, uh, Professor. Tell us, first of all, how does IC work? Right, so it's a basically a bone conduction headphone with a, a camera on it. So when I'm wearing this like this, the camera sees what I'm holding onto. The AI engine recognizes that and have that information read to me through this bone conduction headphone, which uh, transmit that sound through my skull to my ears so I hear the sound without having to block my ears. So the sound being what? The sound is audio sound. It's okay. just that it doesn't go through my ear. It goes through the skull bone and stimulate the inner ear and I hear just like normal sound. Right, yeah. okay. It's because it, it's, it can read the label and tell the user what it is. In other words, someone has to ask the question to get the right answer. Do I have to ask it and then I get the answer? Is yeah, that so how it works? The easiest way to think about this is you can think of this as the Siri and GPT for combo, right? It's a companion. You can ask questions. It can answer you. You can ask follow-up questions. Yeah. All right. So has this actually been tested in, in a real setting? Yeah, so I mean, when we build devices like this, it goes through user-centered design process, which means we involve users right from the early stage. This has gone through a number of iterations. During those, we have had lab testing as well as in the wild testing, but under our supervision. The next step, however, is to do the beta version and hand it over to users and have them used unsupervised for a period of time. All right, uh, I notice you do have some props in front of you. If you could just demonstrate for us Yep. exactly how this works. So I'll have the audio played through this speaker so that all of okay. us can hear. So I'm just holding on to this book and trigger it. You hear the, the right. image being yes. captured. Mm -hmm. Now the AI engine is trying to recognize that. So it's trying, it takes a they couple of... seconds. Yeah. a book titled Assistive Augmentation. Can we take a look at the book? I mean, obviously you could see the... No, but, but there, there's so many yeah. aspects so it is, it of is, an, it, a possible yeah. answer, right? Yep. How yeah. does right. it know that the one thing you want to know is you are holding a book called this? It could be many other things you might want to know about mm. something that you're holding. How do they know that's the facet you are interested so in? So the, the way it works is, firstly, from the entire scene, it knows that I'm holding on to this item. Right. It gives me a starting point, which is a book, and gives me the title, which is sensible mm -hmm. thing to do. Then I can ask follow-up questions if I wanted, who's the publisher, what color of the, color the book is, who are the editors, it tells me those answers. It will give that yeah. information as well. Yeah. So um, could you, I mean, is there a difference if it's a, this was a book, yeah. is it a difference when it's an actual item like this? It doesn't matter much, it's the same thing. You can hold on to the it same way. So then it is trying to first identify what is this and it will give me the overall idea. So right now it's processing that. Takes few seconds. Okay, right. So it does take some time to yep, actually identify That's something we are, some... we are working on right now. Uh, right. So Sorry. in this case, it is actually a, a medication. Yep, it's a, it's a cold stroke. So, so it would need... I suppose we keep talking about artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. essentially exposure to enough data to know that this is the brand name for something that is, we are I don't holding know, cough a box drops. of vapor drops for immune support. There you go, I, a box but it of doesn't vapor. Know, but it doesn't know what it is. Yeah, so you could yeah. ask, like, does it have vitamins? Actually, no, she said it was a box. She said it was a box it of vapor, vapor drops. drops. With for immune, immune support. For, for yeah. immune support. So it doesn't know what it is. It does, does know. know. What it, is? Yeah. it does okay. know. And and as I said, the AI is just the back-end engine, right? right? What we have done is a powerful embodiment of AI 
to have me have this conversation. Right? Yes, so that you. So yeah. we we make AI accessible through this interface for people to make meaningful interactions. Right, right. So it is. I mean, this, as you were saying, you have tested this in more than the, the laboratory setting. Yep. So what's the next stage for it, though? So there are a couple of things, as you saw. We are working on improving the the time delays and make a a, a better form factor. That's the stage one to make that beta version and then have it deployed with users unsupervised, right. hopefully by the, the third quarter of, of this year. Actually, I'm wondering, it's a very human quality to say, I'm 80% I'm sure that something is the case, but I leave open the possibility of 20%. Can AI do that right now to say, well, I'm not entirely certain, but right now I do think it is this. Or is it it's absolutely one thing or the other? Oh, no. I think just like how you interact with another person, you could ask, how sure are you? Mm. And it will, it will tell you some level of confidence. And I think the way we think of this with the embodiment is it's a companion. You could ask, hey, are you really sure? Is this the right thing? Or you can ask. So what would the answer be to are you really sure? So if it is absolutely sure, it will say, you know, based on the information provided on the box, I think, it's this because it's simply reading, right? If it is inferring, then it might say this is my interpretation, but take it with a pinch of salt. Right. It's, it would be an incredible aid for those people who are visually impaired to be able to access uh, such a, a piece of equipment. Are you working on any other wearables at all? There's some projects ongoing in the lab, like for a futuristic version of this would be, why does the camera has to be bound to my body? Can it fly? Right? When I come out from the MRT, I want to know exit C. It flies, find exit C, guides me like a flying mm. guiding door. Right. Or go to Hoka Center, read the menu and bring to the, the stall that I needed. Uh, so, so that's a project that I'm working right now. Another work is we are working on generative audio AI that can convert images into sound. So a blind person can walk to a, a, a hilltop and enjoy beautiful sceneries mm. through hearing the the sound that's a another so it recreates one. images from audio yeah convert oh, images okay. sonify image using generative ai all right we look forward to seeing that thanks so much for coming this evening showing us how i see helps people to see associate professor saranga nana yakara from nus school of computing thanks thank so you for having coming me this evening